John, he's the last living disciple of Jesus and he's banished to a prison island out at sea. And he gets a vision from God, which is a revelation of the end times. Now, this is not a narrative. It's, an, it's a prophecy or an apocalyptic writing, similar to many Old Testament writings that use symbolic language to describe God's plan for the future. And so throughout Revelations, you have symbolic images and numbers. They're used to draw out a deeper meaning rather than just saying exactly what's gonna happen. For example, you have the number seven. Now number seven has deep meaning throughout scripture and it means completeness. You have other symbols like the golden lampstands and seals and trumpets and bowls, beasts and dragons, crowns, battles, weapons, and even a lake of fire. And it's the reader's responsibility to take these symbols and use scripture to draw conclusions. And let me say up front, Revelation, it's not a secret code about the timing of the end of the world or literal snapshots. It's, it's prophecy. So here's how it goes down. Revelation begins with a letter to seven different churches spoken by Jesus himself, written to encourage and, and challenge these believers who are experiencing apathy and persecution under the Romans. And then John sees a vision of God's throne room up in heaven. And there are creatures and elders and, and angels. There's a scroll with wax seals and no one can open it except the lamb that was slain, Jesus himself. And Jesus opens it and ushers in the end times. And so you have seven seals and seven trumpets and seven bowls, and basically they're bringing a warning to the nations to repent in the face of destruction and hardship to come and turn back to God. But just like Pharaoh's heart was hardened back in the Old Testament and didn't repent, so the people will not repent and turn back to God. So. The book shifts then to the people of God and describes how their mission is to follow the Lamb by being witnesses to the nations. And this will bring people back to God. And that gets us about halfway through the book of Revelation. And the rest is imagery describing a beast and a dragon, and they're fighting against God and God's people, and describes how it's all gonna end. And you have some other images like the mark of the beast, which is 666. And the Bible says it's gonna be on people's forehead and people's hands. Now this is a good example of how we have some false interpretation of scripture sometimes. Cause this is not literally talking about people getting a mark or a tattoo on these places, but it's a reference to giving your total allegiance to evil. In fact, in the book of Deuteronomy, God says we're supposed to put scripture on our foreheads and on our hands to show our allegiance to him. And this is saying that people will turn from God. And then you have Jesus, he's coming in victory on a white horse, which is an awesome description of him coming. And he's calling the world to repentance and there's this final judgment. And you have two choices. You can either follow Jesus or follow the beast. And if you do, you will suffer defeat. And then everything comes to a head, the final battle that we call Armageddon, where you have the dragon and the beast versus Jesus and his army. And when Jesus shows up on his white horse, he already has blood on himself because it's his own blood from his sacrifice on the cross. And the only weapon he has is this, this sword of his mouth, which is justice. And he holds everyone accountable and judges everyone. And those who follow Jesus, the Bible says they will reign with him. And those who follow the dragon, they will be condemned to hell. And the final vision that John has is of this new heaven and this new earth. And God makes all things new. Creation is restored, our relationship with God is fixed, and there's perfect harmony and peace everywhere. And this is God telling us something, that in the last times, He will be in control and we will be on His mind. So to sum it up, Revelation is not just a prophecy, but it's also a promise that should motivate us to remain faithful as we wait for Jesus to return. But it's, it's so easy to get lost in all the numbers and fantastical creatures and weird symbols. It's like when someone says to you, you've missed the forest for the trees, meaning that you've missed the bigger picture because you're fixated on a few minor details. So when you read Revelation, remember, it's not a secret code to decipher when Jesus is gonna return, but it's a symbolic vision showing that Jesus will come back, he will defeat evil, and he's gonna make all things new. That's it. That's Revelation as simple as you're gonna get it.